thinking about right acute obtuse angles and what you guys know about them already. And like I said, you probably know more than, um, like, I mean, probably you've heard of at least, and hopefully you know probably as much as you need to know about them at, at this point, kind of what I'm expecting. Um, So kind of just whatever for whatever reason those are words that we just tend to remember like i mean even um as you get a little bit older and not using these all the time these are something that come up in everyday life very often all right so any volunteers any of them that you want to find for us right acute or juice i know but you guys had good stuff written down so what do you got Okay, this is what you've written down for 20 years. Yeah, so acute would be smaller than 90 degrees or less than 90 degrees. It's fine. And I'm assuming a lot of you guys I saw drew like an acute angle. Um, it kind of looks like kind of the typical angle you would draw. If I said draw an angle, you probably would draw an acute angle. Just because that's what we picture as an angle. Um, so it kind of looks like maybe like a little bird beak or something like, um, so that would be an acute angle. So anything less than 90 degrees. So why is 90 degrees so important? Why do we know something about 90 degrees? What's true about 90 degree angle? What do we call that? Let's call that a right angle. So it's kind of almost interchangeable. Um, and you see right angles all over this room. Like if this room didn't have 90 degree angles in it, the building probably wouldn't even be standing because it'd be all crooked or, um, so there's 90 degree angles on the floor, on the wall, um, on your paper, you know, the edge of your paper is a 90 degree angle. So um, 90 degree is a right angle. And we use the little square, if you've never used that before, that little square tells us it's 90 degrees. And it needs to be exactly 90 degrees. If you've ever tried to, um, I mean, if someone had tried to put these tiles on the floor and these weren't exactly 90 degree angles, um, the tiles would look pretty wonky and maybe it wouldn't even fit together. Um, there'd be like lots of gaps. So it's a big deal for it to be a perfect 90 degree angle. So exactly 90 degrees. And then hopefully cross elimination of two would be more than 90 degrees. So we are going to add in the piece, um, you could say less than 180 though as well. So an obtuse angle. Kind of like a door is really wide open versus here a door is kind of just slightly ajar, like it's um, pretty open there, like greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180. And we're going to talk about that 180 here in a second. So these are words we're going to use a lot. And like I said, you guys are probably really comfortable with it. But we're going to get more in depth with it and we're going to use some algebra along with it. So sometimes that makes things a little more confusing. Um, so just remembering kind of what you guys already knew going into this. Um, so we're going to talk about measuring and naming angles today. Again, when we're measuring angles though today, we're not going to grab a protractor and measure them like the actual angle measure. What we're going to be doing is finding the measure using algebra. So um, just know that if you're grabbing a protractor to do your homework tonight, probably doing something wrong. I think, I don't think I have any that um, you have to actually measure in our homework or you shouldn't have to. So I think they use this vocab word in one of our homework questions and some of you guys might have figured it out. Opposite rays are basically two rays that go completely opposite one another. They start at the same point and then they go completely in the opposite direction. This is also called a straight angle. So 
So this is 180 degrees, so a flat line. It is still considered an angle, but it opens as far as you can go by complete splits. Um, the door is completely wide open. So we have a flat line, 180 degrees. They also call it, again, a straight angle. Now, this is something we can assume. So if you guys see a straight line, you can assume it's 180 degrees. There's not a whole lot of other things they allow us to assume, assume in geometry. So you can assume that this is a straight line. So that's perfectly fine to assume that. Um, so I'm going to write that under here. Line, you can assume it's a straight line. Now, some of you guys might be like, some lines are really poorly drawn. I will try to make sure, like on a test or a quiz or in the book, that it looks like a straight line. It's not going to be like some sort of wonky, like questionable straight line. So if it looks like a straight line, you can assume it is. One of the things you can actually assume in geometry. So we're going to talk about angles and how to name them. So um, we have our angle here. So we have an angle here. It's an acute angle. It definitely looks like it's less than 90 degrees. Angles are formed by two rays with a common endpoint. So um, they share that common endpoint. Angles are formed by two rays with a common endpoint. So we have ray ON and ray OM are the two rays. Now that common endpoint in, in an angle has a specific name, we call it the vertex. So this O is gonna be our vertex. It's that common endpoint, kind of our center of our angle, be like where the hinge on the door is. Now we're gonna be able to name this angle, and we can name it, um, and get to name it in a very specific way. So the vertex has to be in the center of the name. So we're going to use a little symbol that looks like a little angle. And the angle, regardless of if it's a right, acute, or obtuse angle, we're all going to always use a little, like, kind of like a little squished L. And I call it, I can call it O, or sorry, N O M, M O N, are both acceptable names of this angle. The O has to be in the center of the name. So this must be the vertex. Now, there's some people in the world who are so famous, you can say their first name and you know exactly who they're talking about. Um, kind of like, I always say it's like a Beyonce angle or like Madonna angle from years ago. So like there's people that I can name and you're like, you're not like Beyonce who? Like which one is that? I mean, now Beyonce is probably not even a great one. Who's the, someone that you know just by a first name? Someone famous. No? I don't know. I'm not very hip with who's famous right now. So, um, like, maybe even, like, sports fans, LeBron, I think most of you guys are not, like, now, is that LeBron James or Le LeBron Smith? I mean, it's not like there's a lot of options for 
like we're talking about, we're talking about, or Giannis maybe is someone that we can talk about in terms of just a first name only. This angle is kind of like a Giannis angle then. So this name, this angle, I could describe this as angle O. And it's okay to do that because it's not like I'm saying what their angle O is there. There's going to be some that I'm not going to be able to call just by a single angle uh, or a single letter. But if it's a unique angle, I can use just a single letter. And I'll show you guys when we can't do that. But this is an example where I know what you're talking about. If you say, hey, I'm pointing to angle O, I would know which angle you're talking about. So it's got to be like a unique angle or something that like you definitely know who I'm talking about if I say yeah, it's not like, oh, you mean like the one that's like, you know, a governor? Like, I mean, no, he's, he's a basketball player. Like, you know who I'm talking about right away. All right. So, um, look at this drawing here. So the drawing you see here, I'm going to talk about what it means to be inside of an angle and outside of an angle. So, um, can someone name the angle they see here? What angle? How do we name that angle? So if I wanted to name this angle that's drawn in this picture, the one that in mine looks like red. Go ahead, Peyton. Up to, it is up to this angle, but name it like with its like name. How would I call it? Can I just use M? Yeah. Do you guys know what I'm talking about if I talk about angle M? You should be able to, right? There's not a bunch of angle M's up there. So yeah, angle M would be acceptable. Does someone have a longer name, like a more like formal name? Go ahead. QMN. QMN would be acceptable. There's one other one we could use. Yeah, get crazy, yeah. Yeah, so we can switch that order. I know, so wild. And, and Q, all of those are acceptable names for this angle. The, Q, the M has to be in the middle or by itself here. So that would be, those would all be acceptable names for that angle. Now, we're going to talk about the idea of interior points in an angle and then exterior points. So I'll explain that here. Sounds kind of obvious. So just like it sounds like if I open, like if it's inside the angle, it's considered an interior point. If it's outside that angle, it's an exterior point. So that's a vocab where they use it. I just want you guys to be clear on it. So interior, what points are on the interior? Same thing. Points, Nolan, which points are on the interior of the same? S and R, yeah, S and R. So those ones are on the inside of the angle. Drake, what do you think on the outside, exterior points? P and O. P and O, yeah. Now the ones on the angle, we're not going to use those. Like those aren't interior or exterior. They're just on the angle. Okay. So the way we measure an angle is in degrees. So when you guys have used, um, like my, I think my eighth grader, I think I had a volume of protractor this year. It's like that little half circle thing that you can measure angles with. Um, the measurement on there are always in degrees. And Degrees get used all over the place. You can actually see um, degrees if you're driving up a mountain. Um, they'll talk about the angle of elevation. Um, carpenters or uh, engineers use degrees all the time on the degree of like an incline. Like so the ramp in our hallway has a specific degree that's acceptable for someone that needs to use a wheelchair. So there's like there's like important like measurements like that we need to know. So degrees is the standard measurement that someone came up with long before our time, kind of like inches and centimeters, but degrees is all the way around the circle would be 360 degrees. So the circle is broken up into little slices, 
360 little slices, and so one little slice would be one degree. So a tiny little slice, so if I said it was a one degree incline, that'd be a very, very slight incline. Maybe even some of your houses have spots in your house where you kind of feel like you're walking uphill a little bit if your house is older. You might have like that, like an incline, actually, you know, a percentage incline in your house, like your house might be a little crooked. So um, degrees is the way we measure angles. So it's a standard measurement for angles. Now there are other ways to measure angles. We're going to use degrees right now. In, when you get into trigonometry, you use other measurements for angles. This is kind of our standard measurement. And I think this one's used pretty widely. Um, they use some other different measurements um, when they're performing more complex calculations. So like an engineer might use a different type of measurement. So. We'll do a few examples, and then, like I said, we'll um, give you guys a little break. We're probably not going to go outside today. It's looking pretty gloomy out there. We'll probably stay in and maybe just use whiteboards or something um, to try and um, just give you a break from notes for a little bit. So, um, so in this drawing, it said, given that um, KLM is a straight angle, well, first of all, they wouldn't even have to tell us that. Again, if this looks like a straight line, we can assume it is. So KLM to me looks like a straight line. You can assume that. Really wouldn't have had to say that. Um, it says find the measure KLM. Now why are they using three letters for the angle and not just calling this angle L? Why don't they just call it angle L? There's, there's two angles or maybe even three there. So that would be like an instance where actually before I could use this example. I don't think we have any multiple names. Before in this room there was two Brooks in here when the eighth graders were here, right? I think there was. So um, if there was, you know, if there's two of the same name, I can't say, hey, you know, like, hey, Jim, like, you know, and like all the gyms in the room turn around. So this is the same idea here is that there's different angles depending on the name. They want me to find the measure KLN. So KLN is this angle. See how I figured that out? I'm in K to L to N. So, they want to know this angle. They tell us that we have a straight angle here. But rather than measuring this, they give me some measurements. They tell me that the one angle is 3x minus 7 degrees, and the other one is 8x plus 3 degrees. But they don't tell me something that I can assume. What do I know about these angles together? Yeah, go ahead. They add up to 180. Remember, we said a straight line is going to be 180 degrees. So this, all the way over, is going to be 180 degrees. So I know that those two angles together should add to 180 degrees. So what I'm able to do with that is write an algebra equation that will show me that. That these two together better add to 180 degrees. And you're saying, well, no, I just want to find that little angle, but we'll be able to. We find x. We're going to be able to figure out that little angle then in a minute here. So we're going to use this information that we can add these two together. So 3x minus 7 plus 8x plus 3. Those two angles together should add to 180. So straight angles we can assume. So I can assume that's 180. And then again, this becomes an algebra expression that is pretty, or equation that's pretty doable for us to solve as long as we're okay with solving equations. Which I gather that most of you guys are there. We're just getting some rust off your memory with that. So this is 11x. That'll be a negative 4 when you put those together because we're on the same side of the equal sign right now. Move the 4 over. Now, again, I don't get a nice number in this case. Don't think you did anything wrong. It's okay. A 
lot of times things aren't exact whole number answers, and that's perfectly fine. We're going to divide by 11. So I find out that x is whatever 184 divided by 11 is. You guys get. Again, guys, have calculators out. You guys should be doing this too. What do we get when we divide that? We're dividing, dividing, dividing to do long division, you know. Of course, that'd be fine, but what do you guys get? Start bringing your calculator to get. Yeah, 16.727, 16.73, something like that. So an approximate answer, not a nice whole number, that's okay. Now, again, I have to look at what they're asking me for. Remember, they wanted this to tell us the measure of angle K out N. So I have to go back in and use this to figure out that angle. So if I want to know KLN, I have to put that back in. So 3 times 16.73. And then subtract 7 from it, I get like 43.2, I think, ish. 43.19. So let's go, yeah, 43.2. 43.2 degrees. And now it's okay for you to look at a drawing and say, that sounds about right. Like, I mean, if it was it was supposed to be like an obtuse angle and you got an acute one, I hope you kind of question, or if you got an answer that was negative, or if you got an answer that was like more than 180 degrees, I hope you'd question what you were doing if you were doing something wrong. So um, use a little bit of common sense with this, but also know that you can't say like, well, that looks more like 48 degrees. I must have done something wrong. Know that the drawing might not be perfect. So if you took a protractor, and measure this, it's probably not 43 degrees. And that's okay. Like, we have to kind of just assume what they tell us is true. All right, so let's do this um, next example, and then we will, like I said, take a little break from notes for a little bit. It says, given that the measure is XYZ, or sorry, XYZ is 72 degrees. So they're telling us, so X, Y, Z. So this big angle is 72 degrees. So again, they couldn't have us assume something in this case. You might say, well, I think that's 90 degrees. You can't assume 90 degrees. You can't assume 80 degrees. You can't assume anything other than 180. They want us to find the measure of X, Y, W, which is this one. So see if you guys can set this one up. So really similarly, it's just this time they know it equals 72 rather than 180. And this time the number does work out nice. So if you get a decimal, something's going wrong. Don't forget to go back in and find the other find that angle they're asking about. I start setting it up on the board so you have Combine like terms. The number ended up here. So these two smaller angles add to big, the bigger angle. If you didn't get that already, you should have been able to set up an equation, adding them together, it should equal 72. 
Now remember, when we're on the left side of the equal sign, you can just combine them the way they are. So you don't have to like undo them. So 2x and 3x is going to be 5x. Negative 9 and 6 is going to be a negative 3. And at this point now, now is when I start undoing things. So now I start doing the opposite of what I see. So this is a minus 3, so I'm going to add 3. 72 and 3 is going to be 75. And I'm going to divide by 5 to get x is, what is that, 15. And again, once I know what x is, I have to go back and find the angle they're looking for. And they asked for x, y, w. That's this one. So 3 times 15 plus 6. 45 plus 6. So we get 51 degrees for that angle. And again, if you measured it, I don't know that it would be 51 degrees. Again, that's not what we're doing here. We're not actually measuring it. We're doing the algebra to get to that angle. Okay? So, um, I want you guys to grab um, whiteboards, but not all at the same time. So let me grab, let me kind of separate them off. Um, guys, if you're kind of giving yourself at your desk a little bit of a mask break, that's perfectly fine again, so you can't go outside today. Um, so why doesn't um, that first girl, like Jacob's girl, come grab whiteboard marker, eraser, or a uh, eraser, it's going to be my next. My eraser's, my eraser's have been retired. This is mine. Okay, so I'm going to take so again, at your desk, if you need a little mask, right, it's perfectly fine. Okay. Um, then go ahead, Luke's throw. Dawson's row, if you guys want to go back and grab it. I'm going to pause for a minute as we... 